We now know that matter comes in three different phases. We've got solid, we've got liquid, and we've got gas. Yes, some learners also always ask me, sir, what about the fourth one called plasma? My teacher spoke about that. Now, I'll be honest, I get annoyed with teachers like that where they'll take the whole lesson talking about plasma, for example, because it's pretty interesting. But the idea is that you don't really need to know that for, for your exams. They're not really gonna test you on that. Maybe they'll ask it like, um, maybe they'll ask you like, what is the fourth phase or something? I don't know, I've never seen them ask it in an exam, but then some teachers will spend like a whole lesson talking about it. I get it, it's really interesting, but um, you know, we don't have time. Like we gotta just go through what's in the actual curriculum um, because you guys have loads of subjects and it's interesting, I get that, but you guys end up being the ones who have to stress to try cram everything in. So um, that's why I'm not gonna waste time now talking about this fourth one called plasma because they're not gonna test you on it, okay? So what you need to know is the three main phases that we have is which is solids, liquids, and gases. Now, remember with solids, the particles are the closest together, okay? So maybe something like this, okay? And they're nice and organized. Right, now with liquids, um, the particles are a little bit further apart. So maybe, and it's not, they, they, they're sort of all over the place. It's not like a nice and organized structure. Now, something I wanna mention, and it is something that we will talk about in later lessons. When I draw these little dots, I'm not necessarily saying that that is a single little atom, okay? This could actually be um, a water molecule. So you could actually, if you wanted me to, we could actually put three little things there. Um, or actually, let's go, um, so for example there, that could be like H2O. So when I say um, the particles, it depends on what we're talking about. So let's say for the liquid, we're talking about water at room temperature, then this is a water particle, which is um, two hydrogens and one oxygen, because it's H2O, okay? This is just for later on, in, or in later lessons, where we start talking about um, things like ionic bonding, covalent, and metallic. I don't want you to think or get confused with what I've been saying now. Um, so in the previous lesson, I told you that um, in between these particles, there are forces, okay? And those forces are called intermolecular forces. But in later chapters, we're gonna start looking at the forces that are actually in between the individual atoms. So like if I had to take that and I had to expand that, then there are, there are bonds that we have in between these atoms. And those, those bonds are not the same as these ones, these forces over here. So these forces over here are in between the actual molecules. So for example, here's a water and here's a water, whereas these um, bonds are actually between the atoms inside one water molecule. Okay, so when I say that there are forces between the particles, I'm talking about these ones, and I'm not talking about these ones. These are other things. These are like ionic, covalent, metallic, and that only comes up in uh, later chapters. Okay, so connecting all of these water molecules to each other are these intermolecular forces. Okay, and I'll just do them like that with dotted lines. There are forces in between all of them and that's what keeps them together, okay? In the um, solid phase, that is also happening. So we might have water particles in the solid phase, okay, like ice, okay? And so in between these particles will be um, intermolecular forces. Whereas in later chapters, we're actually gonna start looking what is inside each particle. Like what are the, what are the forces keeping that together? And that's where you start looking at ionic bonding, metallic covalent but that's not what this is, okay? So, right, and then gas phase. So we could have gas um, water particles like steam. And then once again, connecting all of those um, are these intermolecular forces, okay? And everything's connected to each other. So there's all of these um, forces that are trying to attract each other. But now remember, these molecules um, in the solid phase, they're all busy vibrating. This is what we learned in the previous lesson. They are busy vibrating. Um, over here, they are busy, these, these particles are busy moving around. So we can just show arrows to show that there's movement happening. 
They can move in all directions. And then with a gas, they're moving even faster. So I'll show it with a double arrow like that. They're moving um, even faster, okay, in all sorts of directions, okay. Now, that's just a summary of what we learned in the previous lesson. Now, what we want to look at in this lesson is how do we switch from a solid to a liquid or how do we go from a gas back to a liquid? Um, how do we do that? Okay. Now, it's all about energy. Okay. Now, we said that in previous lessons that these particles are always moving. Remember the kinetic molecular theory? tells us that we have small, matter consists of small particles, always moving, okay? And with um, solids, we said that they vibrate in, that, in, in, in the same position, and then liquids and gases can flow. Now, because they are moving, they have energy. Specifically, they have kinetic, they have kinetic energy. So the way that you cause something to go, for example, from a solid to a liquid, is you change you you add or remove energy okay so if you look at these particles over here they are being held together by these intermolecular forces okay so i'm going to call them intermolecular force like that in like just i'm going to shorten that imf and i'm going to say for the solid okay that's what those little black lines are and then here we have intermolecular forces for the liquids and then here we have intermolecular forces for the gas. Now, something you need to understand is that the intermolecular forces in a solid are the strongest ones, and then the gas ones are the weakest, and the liquid is somewhere in between. So I'm gonna say that the intermolecular forces of the solid are bigger or stronger than the intermolecular forces of the liquid, and they are stronger than the intermolecular forces of the gas. So these ones are weak, these ones are um, stronger, and these ones are medium, okay? So what happens is that to get, for example, the this part over here, to try turn that into a liquid, you need to add energy into the system. You need to add energy, okay? So let's say here, add energy, why? Well, what that does is if you add energy, and we always add energy in the form of um, heat, so we heat it up, okay? Now what that does is it starts giving these particles, it allows them to move a little bit faster, okay? So it increases their kinetic energy. As it increases their kinetic energy, they, they can start moving a little bit faster. As they can start moving faster, they start getting enough energy and they are actually able to start moving further away from each other. Okay, and they are able to start overcoming this attraction force that's trying to keep them together. So that's what we do. We add energy in the form of heat, so we increase the temperature, and that allows the particles to start moving a little bit faster, and they start being able to overcome these attraction forces that are holding them together. And that'll be the same if you want to go from a liquid, where the intermolecular forces are medium, to a gas where the intermolecular forces are weak. If you want to get the particles to move further apart, then you take this liquid and you would, um, you would add heat and then that would turn it into a gas. So as you add heat, you can go from a solid to a liquid to a gas, okay? So let's just write here. If we add energy, then we can go from a solid to a liquid and then to a gas. Okay, now let's talk about, um, well, let's first just make a little summary of what we've said there. So um, when you add heat energy to a solid, it allows the particles to move faster. And then brackets here, you could say that they'll have more kinetic energy. Okay, they can um, then overcome the intermolecular forces and turn into a liquid and turn into a liquid. Okay, so when you add heat energy to a solid, it allows the particles to move faster, they'll have more kinetic energy, and then they can overcome that intermolec those intermolecular forces and they can turn into a liquid, which would look like this. Okay, now we can do the same thing when you go from a liquid to a gas. So we can say here, when you add heat energy to a liquid, 
It allows the particles to move faster. They can overcome the intermolecular forces and turn into a gas. Okay, so when you add energy, you go from solid to liquid to gas. Now we're gonna talk about what happens when you decrease the temperature. So let's say we originally, um, we have a gas, okay? Now these gas molecules, uh, these particles over here, they have a lot of energy, okay? They, they move around, they're moving really quickly, as we can show by the double arrow. So they've got a lot of energy, okay? So let's say you take this gas now, this container that's filled with gas, and you literally just go put it in the fridge. Well, what is that gonna do? Well, the fridge is very cold, and so it's gonna cause these particles to lose some of their energy, and they're gonna start moving slower. As they start moving slower and they lose energy, they're actually gonna start converting into a liquid where, because they're gonna, they're gonna get a little bit too close to each other, and because they're moving a little bit slower, they're easier to grab onto each other. Whereas when they're moving so fast, it's difficult for them to move, they hold onto each other. But as they start slowing down, they're gonna start moving a little bit um, closer together, and it's easier for them to grab onto each other, and they start pulling themselves closer, and suddenly it turns into a liquid. And then if you have a liquid, and you keep cooling it down, like if you put it in the freezer, the particles are gonna keep losing energy, they're gonna move slower, they're gonna move closer together, they're gonna pull onto each other even more, and suddenly you're gonna turn into a solid. So when you reduce the temperature, let's make a little note here, when temperature is reduced, energy is removed from the particles. We're not adding energy now, now, we, now we're removing energy. Energy is removed from the particles. They will begin to move slower, and that's just because they now have lower kinetic energy. You can now say that the particles begin to attract each other more strongly and move closer together, okay? And so you could then go from a gas to a liquid, and then you could go to a solid. You could imagine it like this. Imagine you are in a school hall, okay, like a big room, and you've got this weird game that you're gonna play where 10 people are gonna be running around the hall, and you have like some type of rope thing where you have to put the rope around them and try to catch them, okay? And the game is, is that you have to try to catch all 10 of them. Now, if those people are running all over the place really fast, and um, it's, it's gonna be really difficult for you to catch them, right? That would be like in the gas phase. But what if those people start running a little bit slower because they're losing energy? Well, then it's gonna be easier for you to catch them and bring them closer together, and that's where you would turn into a liquid. Because as they get closer together, let's say that there's some type of force that attracts them. But when they were in the gas phase, they were just running so far apart that they could hardly attract each other. But as they get closer together, they begin to attract each other. Then they slow down even more, and so it's easier for you to catch them, it's even more easy for you to catch them so you can gather them and bring them closer, where now that they are even closer together, that attract attraction force becomes even larger between them. But when they are in the gas phase, they're so far apart that the attractive force is not that strong. All I wanna do now is just talk about what are the names of when you go, for example, from a solid to a liquid, like that we call melting. I just wanna talk about all of that, and then we'll stop there. Okay, so here we have in the first part, so the first part we're gonna, so the first part we're gonna look at is when you add heat. And you can just try to visualize this in real life. So for example, if you have a solid, okay, that could be like an ice block. So you have an ice block, and then you convert that into a liquid, so you could think of a glass of water, okay? And then you could convert that into um, some type of gas, which would just be like steam, okay, where the particles are all in the gas phase. So if you think about it, if you put a block of ice on the table uh, or like on your kitchen counter, it eventually starts turning into a liquid. What is that called? Well, that's just called melting. So we can put the word here, melting. Okay, then I want you to take some water, put it in a, sto a pot, and begin to, uh, bo um, not boil it, but yeah, you can try to boil it, right? But, but 
it's going to start turning into a gas. Now, that name is going to mostly be called evaporation. Your teacher might say boiling, but it's not only boiling. For example, if you have a swimming pool, uh, you'll notice that in summer, the amount of liquid or the water actually starts becoming less. And that is because some of that liquid is turning into um, a gas. Even though it's not boiling, I'm sure your water in your pool is not boiling, but it's still turning from a liquid into a gas, okay? So boiling is only a special type of going from a liquid to a gas, but, but the biggest thing is called evaporation. All right, boiling is only when you um, causing all of the bubbling and all of that to happen, but liquids can turn into gas even below the boiling temperature. Okay, now let's say we have a gas and we want to, well, let, let's do this one, this one's easier. So let's say you have a liquid, like, a, like some water, and you put it into the freezer because you want to turn it into a block of ice. Well, what would that be called? Well, that's called freezing, okay? And then, I don't know if you know about this one, but if you have a gas, and you convert that into a liquid, well, that is called condensation. And so that's all that I want to speak about in this lesson. See ya. Hope that was helpful.